Now, if you hang out inside of some of the WordPress communities for long enough, you're bound to find somebody talking about code output or quote unquote clean code. Now, I came into web development through a page builder and I really didn't understand how the code on the back end of the website was actually working. I was totally reliant on the builder's interface and I really never understood all the code that was underneath it. But as I gained more and more knowledge, I started to become more aware of the code that the page builders were actually outputting. Now I know Generate Blocks did a lot of work in this 2.0 release to really clean things up and make the code as efficient as possible. So in today's video, I thought we'd do a little bit of experiment and see exactly the quality of the code or how clean the code is when you build something out using Generate Blocks. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So I think the best way for us to test this out is to just write everything in plain HTML and CSS and see how much code we end up with. Then we can build out the same section in Generate Blocks and see what kind of code it spits out. So I'm gonna do something pretty simple here where we just have a section with a wrapper that kind of contains everything to our website's content width. And then we'll put a headline in the middle and maybe change its alignment just so we can see how Generate Blocks handles all these different styles. So first, we're just gonna start off with the section. Inside of that, we're gonna have a div. This is gonna act as our wrapper. And then inside that, let's say we put an H1 with the title, this is my headline. And now we can go ahead and close out all of those HTML elements. So we'll close out our div and close out our section. So now we have the basic scaffolding here for the HTML we're gonna need for this, but we're probably gonna to wanna to give all these things classes. We could, of course, go into CSS and just target all these elements directly, but I think in more practical terms, we're gonna to wanna to target classes rather than HTML elements because not all our sections, divs, and headlines are gonna be exactly the same. So let me go back through and give each of these three elements classes. Okay, now that all of these have classes, we can start writing our CSS because that's all the HTML we're gonna need for this entire section. So the first thing we wanna do is target our section here. I wanna give it some padding so everything's not pushed up against the edges. We'll do maybe 80 pixels of top and bottom padding and 24 pixels from the left and right. Now, I know it's impossible to see here because we're on a white background. So just for demo purposes, I'm gonna give this a background of light gray. We'll go ahead and save that. And now we can at least see where our section is. Before we wrap this up, we'll go ahead and get rid of these backgrounds, but I just want you to be able to visualize what's going on here. So next we need to target our wrapper. For this, I wanna constrain everything to our website's content width and make sure it's in the center of our screen. So to do that, I'm gonna do a max width of 1280 pixels, and then I'm gonna do a margin inline of auto, which will just push everything to the center of the page. Now, just like the section, we can't really see where this starts and stops. So I'm gonna give this a background color of gray, just so we can see exactly where this wrapper is. Next, we need to target our headline, which had the class of title. And for this, I'm just gonna do a text align of center to put it in the center of that wrapper div, just so we can add a little bit of something to our title. So now that we see how our section is built out, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these background colors because we don't really need them for the demo. And what we're left with is 12 lines of CSS, even with a break in between each one of these declarations and five lines of HTML. So I think by any practical terms, this would be a good example of writing clean code. So now we'll switch over here to generate blocks and recreate that entire section using their UI and their tools. So the first thing we're gonna add in here is a container. We'll need to make sure to change that tag name to a section to match what we did in CodePen. And we wanna give it the class of section here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that as a global style and we'll start editing. Now for this, what we did was give it some top and bottom padding. So I'll do 80 pixels of vertical padding and 24 pixels of horizontal padding to match what we did before. Now inside of that, we need an inner container. Typically I'm gonna click this inner container button, but that's gonna add some things by default. So let's just do this by hand by adding a container. We'll give this a class of wrapper to do just like we did before. And here we'll do a max width of 1280 pixels and we'll go into our spacing and set the horizontal spacing to auto. So it is set auto on both sides. Now inside that we had our H1 headline. So I'll go ahead and add a headline here change it to an H1 and say, this is my headline. We'll give this a class of title, and then we'll go into the typography settings and set the text alignment to center. So that should match everything we did inside CodePen. So let's go ahead and save this and take a look on the front end. Now we do see a font difference here, and that just has to do with me setting up the theme for this install. It's bringing in a sans serif font as opposed to our code pin, which is just using the browser default. But otherwise, these sections look pretty similar. But let's inspect the code and see how Generate Blocks did. 
Now we're gonna have to ignore some of this code up above our section here. These are things that WordPress itself or our theme are adding. We'll dig down until we get to our section here, which is what we started with inside Generate Blocks. So we see the first line here is a section, which is exactly what we had before with a class of section. If we go back and review our code pen, we had section with a class of section. Now inside of that, we have a div with the class of wrapper. Again, in CodePen, that was the next thing we had here, which was a div with a class of wrapper. Inside that, we have our H1 headline. Here, Generate Blocks actually gave this a class of GB text and the class of title, which we assigned ourselves. So this is the first time we can see Generate Blocks adding something to our markup that we didn't necessarily specify on the back end. My guess is Generate Blocks is using this GB text to control some things more globally, but this wasn't something I could see or control in the back end. So this is a point where the page builder is adding something we didn't necessarily ask for on our page. But let's take a look at the CSS for each one of these. If we go back to our section class, we can see here we're targeting the section and we have padding 80 pixels, 24 pixels. Going back to our code pen, that's exactly how we wrote it here. Next is our wrapper. Here we can see it's targeting our wrapper. And even though we set the margin as one value, we did it on the horizontal axis. Generate Blocks actually wrote this out as margin left and margin right, both of those set to auto, even though on the back end, we just did this as the horizontal margin. Now inside CodePen, I did this as margin inline. So there is a bit of a difference here. Now, left and right aren't using logical properties. I would probably prefer this to write margin inline or margin inline start and margin inline end, but that's getting pretty picky here. I think we could let this slide even though that's an improvement they could make. Now, next we have our max width of 1280 pixels, which of course is exactly how we wrote it here inside of our CSS. Lastly, we have our H1 headline. We can see we're targeting that title with a text align of center. And back in CodePen, we can see we had that same exact declaration here. So overall, Generate Blocks did end up adding one extra class, that GB text class, and it did write our CSS a tiny bit different here on the wrapper where it wrote margin left and margin right instead of margin inline as one line of CSS. So overall, we ended up with one extra class that doesn't have any styles attached to it at this point, and we added one extra line of CSS that we didn't necessarily need had they used margin inline. Now I have absolutely no desire to try to prove or convince you that one page builder is better than the next. The best page builder is the one that works for you. However, I was genuinely curious to see how all these different builders handled building out a simple section like this. So I tested four or five others, both block-based and non-block-based, created the same exact section and went and inspected the code to see what they did. Of course, some did better than others. Many of them only added the elements we wanted to, while others doubled the amount of elements by wrapping everything in extra divs. When it came to classes, there was a pretty big difference. Just about every builder I tested out added their own builder specific classes like we saw with that GB text class. Now on all these other builders I tested, it added those builder specific classes to every single element, whether we asked for it or not. Generate was the only one that I could find that would actually add an element without adding any builder specific class. But of course I didn't test them all but it was pretty amazing to see the stark difference in CSS. One of the builders I tested ended up adding 16 classes to the section that we built here with just three elements and literally hundreds of lines of CSS. But the real question is, does this even matter? Does having clean code really make a difference? Now I would say in general terms, the least code you have, the easier it is to make your website perform fast and the easier it is to maintain and change things should you need to target something specific. However, if you get on good hosting and use optimization plugins, you can get any one of these builders loading extremely quickly. It comes down to trade-offs. Some of these builders make things really easy to build. You can build really complex things just using the UI inside the builder. The trade-off to that is they're adding a lot of extra code in the background to get all those things working that you don't have to go do yourself. On the other end of the spectrum is something like Generate Blocks. It might not have all the bells and whistles that some of the other builders have, but it will output really clean code. So the question comes down to what are you most comfortable with and what's most important to you? Every one of us has a different set of expectations or a technical background, and all of us need a little bit something different out of our builder. So like I said before, the best builder on the market is the one that works for you. You can get any of these to perform really well if you know what you're doing. To me, I think the important part about this is really understanding what trade-offs you're making. For a long time, I was using one of the page builders that added a whole lot of extra CSS and HTML that I didn't necessarily ask for. That really caused me to struggle for quite a long time because it was so hard to figure out exactly what was going on inside the code. Once I started to learn more about that and understand the trade-offs I was making, I decided to go down a different road with my builder. 
Now, I was able to build great websites with either one of them, so it really comes back to your own personal preference and what trade-offs you're willing to make. That's a decision that only you can make, no matter how many different videos you watch of people with differing opinions. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, I would appreciate a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.